betrayed with a kiss. Hi, and welcome back to a second season of Cross Examination. We'd like to welcome today Dr. Hani Ashamullah. We're going to be doing an in depth analysis of the medical consequences of the crucifixion. And so we want to start today with just a few questions, Dr. Haney. Thank you for joining us. Mm. Um, Christ was young, right? Christ was 33 when he died. Um, it seems that it was such a, it's, it was such a speedy um, death, right? When he, he got on the cross, only a few minutes maybe, and... A um, few hours. A few hours. Yeah. Um, and, and he passed away. But you are right. I mean, we... There isn't any indication that Christ had any medical illness. We don't know that he, he walked miles to reach the Samaritan woman. Um, he would stay long times praying and fasting. So there are no clear medical illnesses to support that he died natural illness. So you are right. What are the reasons for his speedy death? Is that your question? Yes. So let's start the night before the cross because I think there are few things we, we need to understand. Um, some of the theorists will claim that Christ died because of a, what we call cardiogenic shock. A cardiogenic shock means that there isn't enough blood that the heart pumps, so the heart fails. And when the heart fails, a cardiac arrest happens and the person dies. And remember, Christ had been losing blood since Thursday night on the eve of Friday when he was in Gethsemane it's written in St. Luke that he was not just sweating which means he was losing water but he was also losing blood because some of the sweat was pouring out as blood and that's called actually in medical terms hematohydrosis and hematohydrosis happen in a very stressful conditions when a person is under severe agony or pain some of the pores of the skin opens up and there's something called vasodilatation of all the blood vessels under the skin and you can almost hemorrhage out under severe stressful conditions. So you can lose blood on Thursday night, water through the sweat. He had not eaten a thing all through the eve of Friday, say 5, 6 p.m. on Thursday, all through until he died around 3 p.m. on Friday. So no water, no, and loss of blood. That brought us to the sixth hour when he said, I'm thirsty. And he was thirsty because he lost a lot of blood. So one theory is the cardiogenic shock. Is that OK? Do you have any questions about that? OK. So the second is what we call neurogenic shock. And neurogenic shock almost mimics a person who under severe pain is nervous system shots off and a person can die actually because of severe pain and I'm sure we'll go through the reasons of pain but I'm sure you are aware that the pain of the cross the pain of the nails the pain of the the walking the pain of the falling under the cross the pain the scourging I mean uh, and, and also the psychological pain when he said um, none of you are staying with me anymore, stay with me one hour. Um, the, the, the psychological pain of losing all his disciples, especially Judas who kissed him a betraying type of kiss. So cardiogenic shock, blood loss, water loss. Um, philosophers, doctors have tried to assess how much blood was lost, but it was in the range of probably two liters from the flogging um, or the nails. Um, second, the neurogenic shock. Um, <clears throat> actually, speaking about the neurogenic shock, there is something very interesting. I wonder if you know it. Um, do you remember when Christ was given a mirror, a mirror and uh, vinegar, right? Uh, during when he said, "I'm thirsty," rather than they give him a drink, they give him uh, a mirror and vinegar. Um, I'm not sure if you have read about this, but medically speaking, crucifixion was known in the Roman Empire as one of the worst way of dying. 
And in order to lessen some of the neurogenic shock so people can stay on the cross longer, they used to give him a very poor man's technique of anesthetic at that time. Mm -hmm. So adding vinegar and mirror was a very bitter way of giving anesthetic to calm his pains. And that's why probably Christ refused to drink because he wants to drink the whole cup till the end. So cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock. The third is very speculative, probably debatable, but what we call um, uh, septic shock. And the septic shock could be due to many reasons. Uh, of course, the word septic means an infection or a very bad infection. When a person gets um, to a point to re receiving a, a worst infection, the whole body gets in a shock, major dilatation of all the blood vessels, and the blood pressure drops a lot, in spite of, in addition to secretions of a lot of toxins in the blood that at the end make, makes the kidney shuts off, the blood shuts, I mean the heart shuts off. So the third reason of the septic shock, some people claim that the nails that was placed on Christ's hand, these are of course metal, not cleansed, um, not, of course, he, they did not really do a real uh, procedure, surgical procedure. So there may be actually some of the fecal matter of the horses and the oxen and the cows. So he could have gotten actually a very bad type of blood infection that could have resulted. The, this is, I said, debatable because most authorities claim that to reach a septic shock with that much, you need six to 12 hours post um, the nail, and he was already dying within hours from the nail. So I know it's a long answer, but as I said, it's a blood loss. That's probably the main thing, causing heart failure, cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock due to major pains from all what I mentioned, and possibly not as important is the septic shock. Okay, so you mentioned that Christ, in the period of, you know, the, that day, he lost two liters of blood? So um, yeah, it's possible. About? Yeah. So how much does the body contain? Like, how significant is that? So, I mean, it's claimed within the circulatory system there is five to six liters, give or take, based on hydration and, and uh, water uh, supply and all of this.